Hi, and welcome to Prayers and Soaps. Um, we're, this is me, Eric, and that's Angel. Hello. <laughs> we're going to be covering, we're doing a special, um, well, a couple specials over, I think there's 40 clips total of All My Children's Erica storyline from 1983. Um, involves the murder of Kent Bogard. Um, Tommy will roll the credits and we'll chat. I, we found out that Erica has a half sister that I never heard of in my life. I watched yeah, I forgot Marvel. all about Silver Kane. <laughs> How did you know about her? So, I believe I might have read it in like one of the either All My Children book or not all my children book like a um, soap opera digest or soap opera weekly or something. I know I, I remember yeah. reading about it. Like Silver Kane, Never. this is Silver Kane. I knew Mark, but I had no idea who Silver was. Um, so I do. I did look up a little stuff on her. So her name is Silver, formerly Lazar. So I guess she came on the show as Lazar. And maybe changed her name to Silver. I don't know what the situation was. No, I was, think it might Lazar is the last name. Um, but there's something with but there is something else with Silver that it's not really Silver. It's so weird. I remember it being weird like that. Huh. I'll have to look more into that. Um so the actress that we're watching is Deborah Goodrich. Um okay. she came back as a diff- she was on, I think, from 82 to 83. And then Rosalind Allen played her in 87. And Claire Beckman played her in 88. I think that and might be it. the same Claire Beckman who was Sabrina later on in As World Turns. Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe, yeah, probably. They all do the, the soapies. Um... She also played in an episode of Beverly Hills 90210, Peyton Place, The Next Generation, Edge of Night in 1984. So she she got around in these soap operas. Um, and the guy that died, who we don't see any flashbacks or anything yet. I don't know if they showed it um, when he died, but we didn't yeah. see it in these clips. Um, the actor's name is Michael Woods, played on from 81 to 82. Oh, Michael and Woods! Lee, mm-hmm. And Lee Goddard played them from 82 to 83. Okay. Um, and I want to say that Lee Goddard is the, he's on Edge of Night, I think, but I have to look him up. I did not do that, but I'll do it next time. I know Michael Woods was on Guiding Light and As the World Turns. Yeah, he's in the lot know him. Stuff. Yeah, I know him on As the World he's Turns. Still he was, he, it was funny. He's still so in Guiding Light, he played the Reardon, um, I think like one of the older brothers. And then, mm. uh, which means that he was, and Ellen Dolan also played Maureen Reardon for, um, oh, well, I forgot her name. <laughs> her name slips my mind. Uh, Ellen Parker. Um, for Ellen okay. Parker played her. So then in two, like 1998, 1999, he played, um, he played a character that was involved with Margot, who was also played by Ellen Dolan. So they went from being lover, so they went from being brother and sister to lovers on <laughs> as the world turns. Oh, yeah. That was I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> interesting. Must have been interesting for them to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like a, it's like the Tracy Quartermain that the Quartermain situation. Yeah. Like they had so they were they were lovers on these were lives and then brought then like not brother and sister, uh mom and son on general hospital right so these clips they start out with mona and i put Dak rambo is the guy who plays steve jacoby Dak so i didn't rambo. look his character i didn't look up his uh character name but Dak is in a ton of stuff up until he died pretty much in the early 90s of aids yeah he was the um, first um mark pinter's character i forgot his name um on another world uh grant, grant. uh harrison yeah Okay. Yeah, he got around in the soap world. He was in Dallas. He was in um, Paper Dolls. Definitely got around. So him and Mona are talking about Erica. um, And apparently she is accused of murder. 
Mm-hmm. So we get this crazy like dream sequence of her like begging people like to help her out, and she didn't do it. She's innocent, and they drag mm-hmm. her off somewhere. She wakes up, and she's saying that she was betrayed by her sister. And I'm like, that's when I was like, sister, what the hell is she talking about? <laughs> hey, um, Eric King got around. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, we have Opal comes by. Um, she's played by Dorothy Lyman from my show, Mama's Family. Mama's Family. I, oh, I just watched that today. <laughs> she's Naomi. Naomi, Naomi Harper. Yep. So uh, I... So when watching, you know, watching um, All My Children in the 90s to the 1000s and stuff, Opal and Erica were like besties. They were like best times. friends, yep. So I was expecting so, that. <laughs> right. So I thought Opal was there to, like, help her out, but she really wasn't. She was there to, nope. like, get in her business. Like, she's mm-hmm. trying to find stuff out. Um, Very interesting to see that. Cause, mm-hmm. But I guess this is, like, so I think Opal first appeared in, like, 81, 82, Mm-hmm. And I know she, when she came on, she was like kind of down and out and kind of like a, like a, uh, what is it called? Um, uh, get rich quick scheme type of mm-hmm. person, like trying to get money, um, which definitely shows in this. Um, Mona can't deal with um, everything that Opal's saying. She's like, what's going on? Did she shoot on blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Um Erica leaves to Silver's. Um, Silver says that she hates her and all of this stuff. Erica says she loved Kent. Erica says the gun just went off accidentally. Silver says she saw the whole thing and it didn't happen that way. And she apparently Erica's been having like mental issues, like um, blackouts and different things like that. So I'm confused about. I'm thinking that Silver is playing Erica. That's what I'm, I'm thinking. Sure she like, is. Yeah, I'm thinking she's playing Erica and she's black. Well, not black. I was saying black lighting. No, it's gaslighting. I think she's gaslighting, gaslighting Erica. Do you think she's causing the blackouts? Do you think she's drugging her? Because I know they're fighting over the same man who's now dead. I'm thinking that's what's happening. I, I, I'm not 100% happening. sure if, if that's actually happening, but I'm just just something off about Silver that... Well, we still have 25 clips left, so hopefully mm-hmm. it gets solved in that. Um, we find out, like, Kent cheated on Erica with Silver, apparently. Erica begs her to tell the truth. She's her sister. Silver just wants justice, she says. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently, Erica can get death penalty. Um, paparazzi's everywhere because you know she's the famous model. Yeah. At the time. <laughs> she was very funny. She cracked me up, Erica, in these scenes. Erica, Erica, Erica. <laughs> oh my God. So over the top, right? <laughs> <laughs> Um, she gets home. She said she was at her brother's house. I wasn't sure where she was, where her mm-hmm. sister was staying. And I didn't know Mark was around, like, in town at that time. Because he's been in and out so much. Mm-hmm. Um, and it looks like he's paired up with Ellen, who is Kathleen Noon. Yes, I love Kathleen shows. Noon. I know, right? So like, many I people, first, so many I first met her on Sunset Beach, so, um... I, yeah, um, I want to say the same. There might have been a show that she was in that she I was in Knott's Landing, too. She was in Knott's Landing, but it was like a show, like a sitcom or something she did before that um, that I knew her from. And I was like, oh, she was in Soaps. Like, I didn't even know. And she's big on Soaps, apparently. Mm-hmm. Um, Steve says, um, like you should plead guilty by reason of insanity. She's like, but I'm not guilty. She like fights him on it. He's like, listen, this is how it's gonna go. Um, he explains it where she feels a little bit better about it. Um, she feels betrayed by Mona. She thinks Mona's against. She thinks everybody's against her. I'm like this poor paranoid woman. Yeah. Like what made her like this? <laughs> like, really paranoid. Like, <laughs> Mona's like this great woman as far as mm-hmm. I've seen. Like. What would have made Erica a crazy woman? Right. <laughs> um, so 
She says that the media wants to butcher her. They're just waiting for something like this. Steve wants to get her records from, like, New York or something. Um, and he seems like he's on bigger. He seems like he wants to help. I don't know his history or story, so I don't know what his situation is. Mm-hmm. But apparently he's, like, one of the best lawyers in town. He works for Palmer, I think they said. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Erica took the gun from Palmer because I guess it was a classic type of gun. Mm-hmm. And she wanted to give it to Kent for, like, a gift of some sort. I don't know if it was his birthday. I don't know what the situation was. Um, and apparently they struggled with the gun. And Erica has memory lapses, so she doesn't remember exactly what happened. Um, she thinks she'll be go. She talks to Mona and thinks she's going to be going to this nice celebrity sanitarium, like um, Martha Stewart went to. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, she's like, it, it'll be a good time to write my memoirs and I'll start a new career. And I'm like, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Who else would think like this? Um, Steve talks to her psychiatrist about things, the blackouts and stuff. The doctor says she can't say that Erica is insane. Which is kind of funny, but I'm like, if you're, if you're having blackouts and stuff, you kind of can. Like, that can be... Yeah. So, I don't know where this doctor's coming from, but being that it's 1983, who knows? You know, I don't know yeah. what you had to do to be insane. Like, maybe rocking or, mm-hmm. <laughs> or something like that. Um, Steve tells Erica that she can't use the insanity plea. The doc won't testify for it. Erica says she she's trying to like prove she's in it like insane like she's like i told her all of these things like i put a tape in the fridge and like all of this stuff like that don't make sense that you know she's mm-hmm. been doing um and yeah i'm wondering if she was drugged or something by that silver chick um steve thinks they can make silver look insane but it'll take some doing you know they gotta work things out whatever Tells her not to talk to anyone. So, of course, she does. Of course. Um, Brooke comes by. Brooke is like her mortal enemy um, from a past mm-hmm. man that they fought over. I always thought that I think they went to school together, her and Brooke, um, for what I remember. And uh, But I I always thought it was like a man in the 80s that they fought over. But they've both been on the show pretty much about, like the same amount of time. Well, I think Brooke came on a little later. Yeah, but I think they went to school together, so she might have only came like a year later. Yeah. I forgot if like another actress was playing her. Yeah, I'm not sure. Before. We'll have to look things up. Um, so, oh, like, <laughs> so in front of Brooke, Erica's like, I have millions and millions of fans out there. Brooke says she would be as fair as she knows how to. She, mm-hmm. she's very Brooke is very professional when it comes to that. Uh-huh. She's not going to use anything that she, you know, she's very legit. Um, Erica says uh, that she found out Silver and Kent were having an affair. She felt betrayed, didn't want to live anymore, pulled a gun to kill herself. Um, Kent tried to get the gun away from her, and the gun went off, and he fell to the floor. And that was that. That's what she remembers. Mm-hmm. We don't know because they didn't show any flashbacks. So mm-hmm. um, maybe there's an All My Children fan that could tell us, or maybe we'll see it in the trial coming up if we get that. Yeah, I'm assuming we have the whole storyline. Hopefully. Um, Steve returns. He's all mad that she's talking to Brooke. He's like, "Get a different lawyer if you're going to do this shit." Basically. Mm-hmm. Um, Stop the interview, tear up the notes, and get out, pretty much, he says the book. Um, Erica feels he can't defend her because he's mad at her. Some doctor comes. I don't know this doctor. He wants to, like, give her a tranquilizer. Um, oh, it's uh, Mona's husband. Is it Mona's husband? Yeah, uh, Charles doctor? Tyler. Oh, that's the one that Phoebe used to be with. Yeah. I got gotcha. I was confused with that too. Like with, uh, I wasn't sure. I don't. I never. Yeah, because uh, Mona was so. 
explained in the live episode, uh, sort of, kind of, um, Mona was Charles's secretary. Was he was married to Phoebe? I believe they had an affair, and that's why Phoebe doesn't um, really like Mona. Right. And she's yeah, she like treats Mona like she doesn't even know her the way she was talking. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um. But uh, I like that Charles. His name's Charles, right? Is that? Mm-hmm. Charles said something along the lines of like, oh, don't worry about Erica. She's she's uh, into self-preservation. Um, she always runs for herself. Erica sneaks out while Mona is distracted. Phoebe comes by being bitchy. That's what I put. <laughs> Mona says she can't say anything. Um, uh, something about poor Charles went to sublime to ridiculous. I guess she was making a remark about him being with her in that house. She was like poo poo and everything and looking mm-hmm. around. Um Erica waits for a train to New York. Um then her purse is missing and she was robbed and she gets all very over dramatic. Um she harasses some lady on the phone, on the payphone. She's like, I, I was robbed. Like she's like, this is me like you know it's all about her and this lady's like i'm on the important call too lady like what the fuck <laughs> erica is so funny like she made me die in these episodes so self-absorbed it's great <laughs> <laughs> so self-absorbed <laughs> while going through this mess um she calls mona for money mona says she can't erica says she hates her and she's her worst enemy <laughs> Erica is going by Miss Simpson. I didn't catch Christina until later, Christine until later. Um, she uh, offers a dress instead of rent, like one of her dresses because she's one of her couture she- dresses. <laughs> <laughs> um, the lady's like, uh, "You can't stay here. You gotta leave. I need money." Um, so she offers to clean, and this is for Mrs. Whalen. Mm -hmm. Um, so she lets her stay if she cleans and stuff Um, Erica's on the news they interview Mona Um, she makes a plea for her to come home Erica calls and have the opal is over Um, I guess trying to find out some scoop Silver will change her story Oh, that's what Mona says to her, that Silver's going to change her story, that she's a fly in order to get her back, basically. Um, Erica says she won't be staying staying there anymore. She wanted to borrow money to get home. This mm-hmm. lady won't give her any money. Um, Steve talks to Silver and threatens her, basically. Um, mm-hmm. Eric calls Mark. He says Silver screwed up. Eric, Erica says she's going to stay there because she can't trust. And then she's in Landview. I thought that was Yeah, she's cool. in Landview. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's kind of fun. So I thought she was in New York for, for, at first, and then she was like, no, no I've, my, I've, I, uh, I wound up in this place called Landview, and I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, yep. That would have been a good crossover time. I wonder if they crossed over. Yeah, would have. 1983. Um, I wonder what month it was because we would be introduced to Corinth, too. Yeah, we have no idea what uh, month it is. I'm sure we can probably find out somehow through books and online. Yeah. Erica tells Mrs. Whalen she's going to stay there. Uh, Mrs. Whalen... Like, Erica's cleaning all this stuff, and all of a sudden, she wants this mirror clean stat. I'm like, what's up with that, ladies? She'll get to it. Um, and as she cleans the mirror, she has flashbacks of her modeling life. Erica, <laughs> Erica, 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 Erica. So weird. <laughs> Mrs. Whalen wants Erica to cook for her and her sister. She goes on... She goes on how she has to live. Oh, she she goes. She tells her sister that she has a live-in maid. 
Um, Opal has a fantasy of catching Erica and being in her to, like, wherever, the FBI for $50,000. And then up to um, 100000 They up it to 100 And she, Erica's, like, all tied up and gagged, and she gives her 50 bucks on the way out. <laughs> She's like, I'm saying I never gave you anything or something like that. I, I guess kind of Opal was like the comic relief, I'm assuming, because every mm-hmm. soap had one up. Um, back she then. was like that too when uh, Joel Larson was playing her. Uh huh. Yeah, like quirky. I mean, I think t- she did get more serious stuff. Um, yeah, she did. But they did something similar with the one made on Another World too, back in I think '79. Rachel and um, Max made. Mm-hmm. She was quirky. She was really annoying, actually. I didn't think she was that funny. Mm. But um, Erica is afraid Mrs. Um, Whalen's friend might know her from Pine Valley because that's where she's from. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we get to see Peter Bergman. Yay! I'm not a Cliff doctor, Morgan. but I play one on TV. Yeah. <laughs> He calls for Mrs. Gurney, who is her sister. Um, Erica calls Mark. She wants to send roses to Kent's memorial, which is happening the next day or something. Mm -hmm. Um, That's when we see Kathleen Noon, who plays Ellen. Um, That's with them. Um, But I don't think she says anything here. Mark wants to know where she is. She says she can't tell him or he'll be like an accessory. Um... Mrs. Whalen asks Erica to go to bingo. She says no. Erica dresses as a nun to attend Kent's memorial. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I had no idea where this was going. I'm like, this is out of control. <laughs> um, Silver talks to Kent's friend. Um, and then I put slash servant because I didn't know what he was. Do you know what he was? I don't know. I just know his the name was Akira. It was is it Zakira? Akira. Akira. Like Akira Toriyama. Yeah, and and they seemed close because he knew, like, because he he was saying how, like, Erica. He would talk highly of Erica, and Silver's like, no, Erica was jealous of me and all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, as Erica's listening, dressed as a nun. Um, and praying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, she tells she tells um, him that Erica killed killed him for loving her or whatever along mm-hmm. those lines. Mark sees Erica. He says, go back to Pine Valley. She says she loved Kent and wants to stay. Um Opal gets to the church. She's trying to scope out Erica for the 50 thou. Um, we hear what kind of man Kent was. Apparently he was a good man, according to the people that were talking or the man that was talking. Opal mm-hmm. is looking all around for Erica. She spots her in the back. Um, she tells people or whatever, and then she kind of disappears. Mark helps her escape. Um, she gets back to Mrs. Raylands. Um, she bumps, doesn't Mrs. Mrs. Valen like catches her or something that's dressed as a nun. And then she says that she took a vow of poverty. That's why she's so poor. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what is happening? Who wrote this? We gotta look up who wrote this. this did year. you, did you get to the part where, uh, Opal catches her and then that's how she leaves? Well, she didn't catch her. She saw her in the back. She saw her. Yeah. Well, she didn't catch and her. She, she saw her. Yeah, she saw her. Yeah, and she told the people, and that's when they were, like, running after her. But I feel like Opal wouldn't get that money if she just, like, if she would have to, like, catch it, wouldn't she? I'm guessing, that's yeah. Dollar. Who knows? Um, but... Oh, and then, like, the paper comes the next day, and it has Erica's, like, right on the front cover. Mm-hmm. So she hides the paper from her. She mentioned something about going back to the convent. Mm-hmm. Um, Mrs. Whalen says the devil is trying to lure you away from the convent, and don't let that happen. Um, Mr. K- 
turn is looking for a new model. We find out on the on TV. She's watching like the news or whatever. Mm-hmm. Says we can't replace Erica, but we're looking for someone new. So that makes her sad. Um, Steve comes to take Mrs. Gurney back to Pine Valley. Wants to introduce um, Mrs. Whalen and Christine, aka mm-hmm. Erica. Erica comes in, says she can't risk being exposed. Erica calls Silver, answers, and then she calls again. Mark answers, and she thanks him. Um, Nick Davis is in town. I don't know anything about him. Do you? Um. <laughs> so I kind of mentioned in the live episode. Um, he was the one that I think had an affair with Erica. Okay. And um, that's why she was saying stuff like, uh, oh, he's like a creep and that sort of thing. And he's been going after me since I was a child. Oh, like, right. Yeah. Yeah, she did say that. Um, but he seems to like want to help her and protect her. But yeah, but it's Erica. <laughs> it's Erica. Very, uh, man, she's nuts. Um, so he's in town. He wants to talk to Erica. Erica calls Nick at Valley Inn. Um, the Valley Inn lady is annoyed because Erica calls like every five seconds like, <laughs> looking for him. Mm-hmm. Um, Erica finally gets Nick. She says she has to leave um, because Nick is a wise man that can help her or something. Like she's telling Mrs. Whalen. Um, it's because she wants to borrow her car. Mm-hmm. And she still says she drove the station wagon at the convent. <laughs> <laughs> telling you, I, I got to look up the writer of this um, this year. It, it, it was great. I wonder if it, this um, is still Agnes Nixon. Yeah, it could be. I um, know Wisner Washam was an, a writer at some point. Yeah, well, I know there's multiple writers on. Yeah, multiple writers, time. yeah. But I want to see like all of them from this year because it should be fun. Because it is good. It's good stuff. Um, so she borrows the car. Um, she has to wear sunglasses and it's nighttime. And she's like, <laughs> heaven will light her way. <laughs> <laughs> um, Erica sees Nick. He says, turn yourself in. He begs her. Um, he says, you got your mother, your brother, you got a good lawyer, like, you can count on, like, what's your problem, girl? Erica wants to go to Chicago with Nick. She's like, we can rent a car and go. Um, then she all of a sudden, like, turns on him, and she's like, you're jealous and all this Mm -hmm. crazy shit. Um, he's like, what do you talk about? He's like, I'm proud of what you became and all of this stuff. She feels betrayed. Mm -hmm. (laughs) This woman. I know. <laughs> it's so disturbing. You're just like, woman, like she needs to be smacked by somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, Nick says um, Brooke is coming to do a story on him because he has like this business or whatever. Um, and she's like, you're a major disappointment. And she goes to leave. And then Brooke sees her and follows her. Mm-hmm. Um, Erica gets back to the house in Landview. Um she says, oh, Brooke wants to do an interview, and she's like, you gotta get your story out there, you know, like just to let people know and I won't say anything I won't tell, mm-hmm. like, you could tell she's sincere, but whatever and she starts opening up to her um, she says she won't turn her in she wants her story, Brooke says, let me prove myself, you know, whatever Erica tells Brooke all about it she was mugged um so something along the lines of an American. She said something like, "I'm I was I'm American Beauty." Like me? Why would they do this to me? <laughs> I've been working as a maid. Do you believe it? <laughs> 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 um, Mrs. Whalen overhears Erica and Brooke. She calls the police. Cops arrive. She blames Brooke immediately. Steve says Mrs. Whalen was the one that called the police, not Brooke. Steve tells her she is wrong, um, and she wants everybody destroyed. <laughs> so Erica <laughs> goes overboard. She wants to kill herself, she's saying, like, all this crazy shit. 
Yeah. She she tells Mark it's all Brooke's fault. Um, she's gonna die here. She's gonna rot in this place. Like she just spent, I guess, at this point. Oh, Erica. Um, <laughs> I was like, girl, get it together. <laughs> Erica calls and talks to Silver. Uh, well, she calls her apartment, and Silver's there and answers the phone. Um, she's like, get out of my apartment. And then she goes off on Mark when he visits. How could you do this to me? And mm -hmm. all this. Get her out of there. Um, the guards saw Mark give Erica something. So she wants it back. She's trying to, like, play it off. Like, here's my handkerchief. This is what he gave me. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I know there's more than that, girl. She shows her the earrings. She's like, but they're... A reminder of Kent. I'm like, how are you? Like, what? He gave them to you? So that's a reminder? Like, I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Want, you would think she'd want something of his, but I guess whatever. It's Erica and it's not her. So It's Erica, you know. <laughs> something to wear. And she kind of warns her. She's like, you know, if you wear these in prison, like, they're going to get you. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> they're probably like nice fancy earrings. Yeah. Um, then she asked the guard to help her escape. I'll give you the earrings if you help me escape. Like, what? <laughs> um, <laughs> Nick visits to say bye to Erica. She says he set her up. She knows that he set her up. And that's all the notes we got for that one. Mm -hmm. So what did you think? Did you like these clips? I really like them. Like, I haven't, I, I barely too. see any 80s on my children. Right, same. So um, I've only seen like a '90s and Ford, um, but yeah, Erica okay. is. I think Erica is even crazier than she what she was in the '90s. Oh, she's definitely crazier in the '80s than she was. Well, in this in '83 anyway. So I guess she had some character growth mm -hmm. because she's not. I mean, she's still a little bit, but not to this extreme. Not thinking everybody's against her like that all the time. So she must learn to trust people eventually. <laughs> yeah, she's mellow in certain aspects. Um, we're not going to talk about her taking uh, ba Maria's baby and naming it Sonia. So, <laughs> uh, you know, that's when I got out of it. That's actually I stopped watching. Uh, um, I didn't like when Maria hooked up with Dimitri, mm -hmm. and because I loved um, Edmund and Maria, and I loved Dimitri and Erica, and I was just like disgusted, and I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> but I did I did go back. Um two thousand five Julia came back, mm -hmm. I believe. Or me, me, yeah. And then I watched until she died. I'm like, she came back just to die like a year later. Yeah. And then I watched when Dixie came back. And so the, and then I pretty much tuned back in for the last like three or four years I watched. Because mm -hmm. it got really good. Once um they got Angie and Jesse back and all. I loved it again. So I watched pretty much from then to the end. What's your history with AMC? So it's kind of so, started in the uh, early nineties, right? Yeah, so yeah, so my it was my first soap opera. Uh nineteen ninety, I remember when Tad and Billy Clyde died. Because both of them were wound up being alive. Um, <laughs> Always. And um <clears throat> And I love the fact that we saw that uh, Tad, that we saw that Tad was alive and we just assumed that Billy Clyde was dead. But we did see that <laughs> Tad was going to go to the Orsini Vineyards and that's what, what would bring him back. So right. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I, I love, love the tornado. Um, <laughs> oh, the tornado is so good. I love Although, all of that stuff. Fun fact of what, what, the second part of the tornado that aired on Monday, there was a severe thunderstorm warning, and I started screaming because I thought it was a tornado. <laughs> and mind you, what, you were like 10? <laughs> I was, no, I was, um, I don't know, I was 10 and 96, and that would make 94. me 94? Yeah, that would so make me eight. Eight. Okay, yeah. well, that makes sense. I don't, that's understandable. <laughs> I was a tad older. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um i think i started uh, did i start uh, i started in 94 and i what i re i do actually remember the tornado so i definitely mm -hmm. started around then and i fell in love with julia and noah oh yeah um, that were really good 
the longest love story ever. It took him like a year to kiss. <laughs> I remember I was watching they kept them apart and he was with Taylor and she she was getting paired with Anton and I'm like, what is going on? I want them together. <laughs> um but yeah, they kept them apart for a long ass time. And then finally they get back together and they leave town. <laughs> like or they finally get together and leave town. Mm-hmm. Um but anyway, yeah, this was um definitely a fun watch. So I'm up for doing more on my children. <laughs> yeah, me too. Especially I want to finish these clips and hopefully we have a resolution. Mm-hmm. If not, we'll have to look at I'm I'm assuming there is uh I'm pretty sure there's a beginning and an end to this. To these yeah. clips. But I wonder if this person just like recorded all Erica clips in eighty three because I'm like I'm I am i i did not get to look more up, but I wanna find like more on there. Hopefully we can find some more stuff. Like, I yeah. would like to see um, Jenny and Greg's stuff. I would like to see early Angie and Jesse's this, stuff. Yeah, I wonder if this is this a year where um, Jenny and, um, oh, what's this? Uh, Darnell Williams' character, Jesse, Jesse? Went, to, uh, went, went to New York. I wonder if this was the, this was the summer that that happened. Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think. I think Jenny was killed off, I want to say, in 85 or 86. Yeah, so like eighty three would have. So I know was there was because like, like um, I don't know why Jenny went up there, but I know Jesse went up there because Liza cried rape, and he had, he escaped just so that way he won't get arrested. Liza was Liza just was, such a Karen. Liza was always a joke, like she was yeah. always or a jerk. I mean, not a joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, from what I've seen, um, she's always kind of been an ass. But all right, anything else on these clips? Nope. All right, we'll wrap up this episode of Queers and Soaps. We'll bring you some more on my children um, because we love watching it. So even if you don't like it, we're bringing it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, subscribe, like, and comment. Um, did you watch all my children? Tell us some things to fill in the gaps. Do you know what else was going on in 1983 that we don't know? Besides, mm-hmm. all we know is Erica stuff right now. Right now, it's the Erica mm-hmm. show. <laughs> um, and have a good night, everyone. Bye. Bye.